Oh, man. Where were you last week? Uh, I was here. Where were you? Where were you last week? Uh, I was here working. I was working on this thing. Where uh, were you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> had a little run in last week. Had to do some health issues and do not get the COVID test, man. They like tickle the back of your brain with that. I mean, the guy comes in and is like, going to go in there just a little ways. I'm like, ah, how far can it go in? I swear to God, it hits uh, the back of my brain. I mean, yeah. it's like, ah. Well, but, that doesn't sound like any fun. I'm glad you didn't have it, though. Yeah, no, I did. I had a negative. First time I ever wanted a negative. Um, so we are back. Sorry for missing last week. Um, like I said, I was out. So obviously I run all that and wasn't able to be here. So we're going to cover, what are we covering today? Tire coatings. Covering coatings. So, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I did there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we actually have a couple different brands. We have Tough Shine and we have... PBL. PBL, Black Label, Pinnacle Black Label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to go over there. And don't forget, if you have any questions, um, any other like little things that you want Mike to cover, hit me up in the comments. And towards the end of this video, we will turn around and I'll ask Mike and then we'll get him answered for you. All right? Oops, hold on. I need my phone. You thought you were done with me? Okay. Now, now you are. Can I go now? You can go now. Okay, we're going to talk about coatings today for tires. And uh, I know a lot of people, when they hear the word coating, they're thinking about something for their car's paint. And paint, uh, ceramic paint coatings are great. I use it on my own car. But today we're going to talk about tire coatings and how they're different than tire dressings and when you'd use one over the other. And um, the, the primary difference is, is uh, to me, what the really cool thing is, and I'll show this later on with uh, the white glove test, is uh, once you get the coating on and you do it right, it's going to be dry to the touch. You're going to have a deep, dark black tire, and it's not going to have that gooey, slimy, oily surface like most dressings leave behind. You know, even if you wipe off the excess, it's still it's a wet surface, not a dry surface. So that's kind of the difference. And it won't be all over your car. And it won't be all over your car. If you bump up against it, you don't get it on your pant leg or, uh, you know, your wash bin when you're washing your wheels or something. Uh, so that's kind of the difference. The key thing about a tire coating, though, is the prep work. Just like anything else in life, your results are going to be determined upon the prep work. And the prep work is the hardest part. Putting the coating on is easy, just like a ceramic coating on a paint finish. It's pretty easy to put the coating on. It's the prep work that takes all the time, energy, and uh, labor. And there's a couple ways to skin that cat. And what I'm going to show today is how to use um, a rotary polisher with uh, a DA brush on it. Wow, and cool. um, this is the coolest setup. Now, um, take, hold on, let me get in. Go there. ahead. Yeah. Where, where are you at? This is the Flex PE14. And as you can see, this is cordless. And, uh, and it's important that you're cordless because usually, um, usually if I were to be getting this car ready to put tire coatings on, it'd be when I was doing the prep wash, washing the car, so I'd be outside, water hose would be running, and there'd be water all over the ground. And of course, that's a recipe for an electric shock if you've got a tool that you've got to plug into the wall. So um, what everybody loves this tool. Nobody likes the price. This thing is like, I don't know, it's like, what do you think, Yancey? Four or five hundred bucks? Somewhere around in there. But I tell you, once you use this tool one time to machine scrub tires, you'll never want to be without it. And you can also use the same brush, but a, a different brush. You should have different brushes for different services, but you can use this to clean carpet and upholstery inside the car. And of course, you can always use it as a rotary polisher on the car paint. Now, uh, now does that, I, I think when I was setting the setup, doesn't that have a, a Velcro, I mean, a, a, a yes. hook and loop interface? Yes, it does. And um, uh, one of the techniques that I should probably show here that I forgot to grab a wrench for, if maybe you want to go grab me one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the Velcro, this is, if you go to search for this, and um, every time I show this on my Facebook page, primarily, uh, people always question, ask the question, Mike, where can I get that brush? And I always think that's kind of funny because I work at Auto Geek. So let's take a guess. Where can you get the brush? Just a regular? Hmm. Right? Yeah, like uh, that, that one or even like, you know, it works really good as a porter cable brush or the Griot's Garage uh, PC brush. And brush, I'll show you what or I'm you mean the, yeah, a thin, the a thin brush, a thin brush, like a butter knife. That's, you know, yeah, that would work. That would work. Well, this, that's, yep, a brush work. is not a knife and it's not a, it's uh, not a branded really. either. It's 3M actually. Okay, so the, 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 this is called, if you go to search for this on the Auto Geek store page, you got to type in heavy duty, then the letters DA, as in dual action polisher DA, heavy duty DA 
brush. Yeah, I listed all the products in the description. Okay, yeah, so they're in there. Okay, anyway, that's how you search for it. Um, I always use it for machine scrubbing tires, and if I go into the Google, the search engine on the Autogy store and type in machine scrubbing tires, you get nothing. So heavy duty DA brush. And these come in two different uh, bristle lengths. They come in one inch, in, in, inch and a half. And you really want the inch and a half because the bristles will flex and your tires have a curve to them, okay? So they're gonna be able to curve around the tire. The short ones will still work, but they're just, the, the curvature's not there, the flex isn't there, so they just don't work as good, but they will work. Is it now, stiffer? Or is it's that the... stiffer because it's shorter. Okay. Yeah, the, br the bristles are the same type of bristle, but because it's shorter, it's stiffer. Now, in order to use this on the rotary, you need a five inch backing plate. This is a Lake Country. Technically, I think it's listed as, a, I think they call it a five inch, but technically it's four inches and seven eighths in diameter. And that enables you to see a little bit of the Velcro backing around the brush so you can center it up. Now, when you go to take this thing off, the Velcro attachment is really strong. And this is where you want it. You could use a butter knife. Go, go to your kitchen, kitchen uh, silverware drawer and get a butter knife. But what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna take and slice this down in there and kind of saw it off like that. Um, if you just start pulling this thing off, what's gonna happen is you'll actually pull the Velcro off the back of the plastic backing here. It's no big deal because you can just take and push it right back on. It's pretty sticky stuff. But if you want to protect it, just get yourself, this is a 3M um, uh, DA. Well, I think uh, Rupes even wrench. has a, a pad tool. Yeah, any, any thin blade will just help you to peel this off. And of course, just anytime you're putting a backing plate, whether you're using a Rupes or a Flex or a Griot's or a port cable, you always want your the back of your pad, or in this case a brush, a little bit oversized from the size of your backing plate so you can look around and center it up. Because just like buffing out a car, you want this thing centered up too. So I center that thing up and I'm good to go. Oh, it looks like you did this once or twice. Yeah. and. Uh, when I, I do, I, I use these a lot for doing car interior, special, especially vinyl, and um, also vinyl tops. I don't use them on cloth tops. It might be a little too aggressive for a cloth top. But for vinyl tops and for vinyl interiors, and for that, I always get two. So I have two brushes, two backing plates, and I just write on one the cleaner and one for the protectant. Okay, so I don't mix and match my brushes with the different chemicals. And it's faster because then you can, instead of trying to pry off your brush, you know, just whack the backing ah, plate. Ah, nice, a little bit quicker. Yeah, swap out, you know. So make the investment. The backing plate's like 20 bucks, so you need two of those. That's 40 bucks. The brushes are 15 a piece. You know, so you'll have like 50 bucks into the whole thing. But man, once, again, once you use this like this to clean tires, you'll never regret it. And I've been teaching this. No more going back to the hand. Never work by hand. I mean, hand works, but we don't sell hands at Autogeek, so I like to show tools. But uh, I've been showing this for, that. For, for like five or six years in my detailing classes. So I, I know there's hundreds of you guys out there that are all machine scrubbing tires nowadays just from taking that class. Okay, so what we have here, oh, real quickly, let me, let me just kind of mention the two different products I'm going to show. There's not a lot of these on the market. This first one is probably the, the leader in the industry because they were first to market. Here, go ahead and pick that up. So this is the in. Tough Shine, what do they call this? Tough Shine Tire Clear Coat. Sometimes I got to look because sometimes people spell clear coat with two words and sometimes they spell it with well, and one plus word. Plus, how many different brands do we yeah. have down here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but this is, this is the Tough Shine Tire Clear Coat. And my understanding is it's an acrylic, a flexible acrylic resin. And, okay. uh, and I've been using this the longest because they were first to market. Now, another one that we brought out in the Pinnacle Black Label line is the Tire Clear Coat. And I'll tell you the difference between the two. Um, this one here, uh, my coworker Andre was instrumental in coming up with this formula. And the difference between this and the other one is this one here is, is technically is supposed to be one and done. One coat, you're done. And the one I'm gonna show you right here on this tire here, this is for me, I'm usually, I'm about six coats. So, you're gonna spend more time putting multiple, multiple coats on to get that deep, dark black look. And you know, me and Yancey are both different. I like my tires on my car to look like hard black plastic. So they're kind of shiny. Yep, no, me, I'm matte. Just get them where they look clean. <laughs> you like a natural sheen. A natural, natural, yep. Okay, so I like that hard plastic looking. Uh, a lot of the guys that I work for have uh, cool street rods and muscle cars and 
They got the BF Goodrich TA radials or the Firestone wide ovals. You know, they got these period correct tires with smooth sidewalls like this, and they like that hard plastic look. So they both do the same thing. This one's gonna, I'm gonna put six coats on here. That one, I'm gonna put one, maybe two, till I get that dark look that I like, and then done. So that one's faster, this one's slower, but this one here, I think you can get, you can control the results better, and I'll show you that as I work through the process. Um, you know, people have different ways of putting it on and different slot process, I mean, uh, uh, preferences, so I mean. Exactly. Now, um, this of course is dirty work, usually done outside. I got some work clothes on here. Uh, wife would kill me if I uh, got my clothes dirty, so. And plus it was raining outside just about five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> okay, is this good enough, Yancey? Can you get a yes, good shot me, of what I'm doing? Let me zoom right in, aren't you? Okay, so we have not touched this tire yet. We nope, haven't done nope. a thing to it. Nope, look at that. And this is also key. Let me just share. This is real important. Everybody's watching this video in the future. I have my own personal rule for using tire coatings, and here's what it is. I'm not going to put a coating on a tire if someone has already put a dressing on there. And why is that? Because, because if you do not get 100% of that dressing off, there's a potential that the coating will delaminate. It's going to make a come big, right off. It's going to make a big mess. It's going to like peel off like you had a sunburn that your skin's peeling off. It's gonna make a big mess. Here, since you're already down there, I'm gonna go ahead and help you out since you forgot to grab this before you came down. Oh, and my scissors, <laughs> and my cup. Yeah, all your stuff. <laughs> Here, okay. let me just move it for you. Okay. And I'm gonna throw these right there. Okay, right. so um, so that's my own personal rule. Uh, if someone brings me a car to detail and you know I take my hand and swipe it like this and I pull black gooey stuff off, that tells me it has a tire dressing, it's already out of the running for a coating. Now, the good news is, is I've been in Stewart, Florida for over 10 years now, and I've been educating all my customers on, on this, and I tell them, look, if you want the coating, as soon as you buy your new tires, let me have the car. Do not put a dressing on them. Keep them naked, okay? So that's just kind of my rule. And the, a, another time I usually don't like to use a coating is if I'm working on a performance tire. So if you got somebody like a Corvette and they got a a sidewall that's an inch and a half, it's real thin. To put a coating on, there's like doing a whole lot of work for just a little bit of appearance gain. It, it is nice because you're gonna have a finish that's dry to the touch, it's never gonna be gooey. As long as you don't do stupid stuff, it's gonna last for up to a year. Um, but for thin wall tires, I just go ahead and hit them with the tire uh, dressing. And um, uh, Yancey, if you could make a little note there to remind me to talk about solvent-based dressings versus water-based dressings at the end of this video. Okay. I'll touch on that because I actually posted an article about that today Okay. and why I would use one over the other. There's a lot of confusion on that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to machine scrub this tire. Now, both the kits, the Pinnacle Black Label kit and the Tough Shine, these are both available in kit form and they come with a real nice brush. Then I don't mean to interrupt, but all this stuff is in the description for this video gotcha. so you guys can look for it. Okay, so both these kits actually come with the same brush and there's actually a science to the brush. If you look at this, it has very short, stiff bristles. All right, and they're and, curved. And what that does is it just helps you to scrub aggressively. Now, if they were longer, you would tax your muscles trying to work that brush over the surface, and it wouldn't scrub as aggressively, and you want to get these things clean. Um, so they actually come with really nice brushes. So if you don't have the cool tool like I'm going to show you today, then, of course, these brushes will work. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take and you want to machine scrub those tires, and you need to get them surgically clean. Um, and so usually for me, I'm at three to four machine cleanings and rinsings before I really have confidence. I've got everything off there. And then I got another little uh, technique and a product I use to really make sure they're clean. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have some of these guzzlers and I'm just going to try to keep some of the water mist down since we're, we're inside the studio here, the show car garage studio. And I'm just going to put some of this stuff down to soak up any water when I go to rinse these tires. Just like that. Okay. And then the Tough Shine Tire Cleaner, of course, in the kit, it comes with its own cleaner. And this is a really nice tire cleaner. And here's the tip. If you're going to do anything to the wheels, do it after you do the tires. Because as you clean the tires, you're going to spray stuff all over the wheels. So if you clean the wheels and uh, coat them or whatever you're going to do to them afterwards, then you don't got to do the job twice. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is spray this on. And the, these do not look like they've ever had anything on them, no dressing at all. Um, if they were really gooey, like with some kind of really like silicone-laden tire dressing, then I might take and clean a section, 
clean it, you know, break the tire up into smaller sections. With these though, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, the whole thing at once. And you can see some of the, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see the browning coming off yeah, there? Yeah, no, I can definitely see that. Okay, so a lot of confusion. A lot of people think the browning comes from a tire dressing, and that's just not right. The, the, the browning is actually a function of um, an ingredient in the tire. Let me go ahead and rub this, and I'll tell you what that is. Or, or scrub this, not rub this. I'm going to turn this down to the low speed thing. I was about ready to say, what, what, what setting you got that on? Yeah, that's pretty high, huh? And this, this really works good to get in here and clean these. Plus it speeds the entire process up. Yeah, one other thing I got to do is I got to cover up my leg. I'm splattering it and I just polished it. Oh, okay. Dang it. I got a little more cleaner. You got all black coming off there. I see that. good. <laughs> Don't breathe it in, people. Don't breathe it in. I was cleaning my lungs out there. Is that what you're doing? Getting the browning out? Getting the browning out. <laughs> Smokers, do not do that. That would be bad. Okay, and as you can see, you really plaster everything around oh, this hey, car. Let me, let, me, let me get in there. I can show the rim. And, right you know, in the real world, um, one of the things I teach in my classes, and I, I know a lot of guys do this, but you always, when you go to wash the car, you do wheels and tires first, then you start at the top and work your way down. That way you avoid getting water spots on the car. Do you want to show them how you clean your brush? Yes, I will. So let me show you this little technique. And, I'm gonna get and again, my... you'd be outside normally. Yeah, more than you'd be outside. Okay, so. Do it on the red. First, I'm going to rinse the tire before it okay. dries. Okay, so just a little rinsey, rinsey here. Oh, it's really black stuff coming off there. Well, that means you cleaned. Okay, so then, now, if I take and go to clean this the second time and I use all this gunk on the brush, I'm actually just reintroducing. I'm never getting the tire clean. So what I always show guys, and again, I would be doing this outside normally, is just take your hose. You already got your water out there. Turn it on like this. Oh, look at that. And you just clean that brush. Look how clean that brush gets. Okay, now I'm going back to clean with a nice clean brush. Okay, maybe get a chance, grab me some more of them green things. I can do okay. that. So here's the second cleaning. So again, back to the cleaner. And, and really, uh, talking about the prep work, it is so important to get these tires clean if you're gonna put a coating on. Prep is king. That's good. Just over here by me is good. Yes, you want to tell them about the little blocks of wood where it's got the tire sitting on? Yeah, um, what we did is we took, as you can see, this is actually, the car is floating up off the ground a little bit. We have, actually I'm gonna zoom away from Mike real quick. We took a two by four, we cut it down put a 45 on it so that way we can lift the car up just enough so that way we can get the entire tire without having to move the vehicle forward or back to get the part that we couldn't get. Okay, rinse it again. Get all that gunk off there. And now for the people out there that also have motorcycles, you could use the cleaning part of this for the clean, cleaning your motorcycle tires, but once you get to there, no coatings, no dressings, no nothing on motorcycle tires, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't want to slip and slide on my Harley going around a corner. Um, you know, I've been down on a bike three times in a major way in my life, Re like bad, really bad. One accident, um, I had a head-on with a Chrysler 300, not a, a 1971, it was a big car, and I had a head-on <laughs> with a, a Yamaha 750, and. Uh, uh, bikes are dangerous enough as it is. Don't do anything to make them more dangerous like coating the tires. Okay, so we've cleaned this twice and um, I'll go ahead and do this uh, four times. Just make sure. Back the key to the is clean. to make sure that you get it really good and 
clean. Now, if there's a, a dressing or a coating, you might have to do it more times, right, Mike? Um, well, if there's a dressing, I wouldn't be doing this. I just, I don't put coatings on tires that had dressing. No, some, some guys do, but I don't. Right. I don't need the headache. <laughs> Well, what if somebody is out there that is wanting to do that? You'd literally have to clean your tires over and over and over again to get all that stuff off the yeah, tire. Yeah, you could you could get it off. You might want to, you know, you might want to do it over a couple week period. So that way, when you're driving the car through centrifugal force, you know, wear and tear, any previously applied dressing could migrate out of it and then clean it and then repeat that process a few times. Okay, so that's the third time. And as you look, Actually, my brush isn't even getting dirty anymore. Okay. Yeah, so that's a sign that you're it's, actually doing something. Yeah, it's really getting clean here. And then I, I got another, I got two little techniques actually that I use to really make sure these tires are clean. Okay, that was three. Here would be the fourth time. And, uh, you know, of course, if, if you didn't have a machine, you could do this. And it will work. It's you just, just be there for a while. Well, you know, just... Um, <laughs> The machine always outperforms the human. Have you ever seen that movie you Terminator? Uh, yeah, you're part one, right? <laughs> yeah, the machine's pretty You're tough. a T9-1000. Exactly. Let me make sure that's clean. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave these towels out, Yancey, and later on after work, you can come out here and clean the floor. Oh, I thought you were going to make me, you know, use the brush and actually, you know, scrub the entire floor now. Okay, last time. All right, um, I got a question right here that actually kind of pertains to all this. Well, it's not really a question, it's somebody stating something. Uh, actually, no, it is a question. Not, never mind. Michael O'Neill. Hey, Michael O'Neill. Can I use a regular degreaser for cleaning? If you want to, I just ain't going to show that on a professional level in the car detailing industry. Okay, why um, would you not want to use a degreaser or a wheel? Uh, cause, um, or on a tire, I'm sorry. well, you know, sometimes I don't like to play chemist and I know a lot of guys use it, but as a, as someone that's recognized as an instructor in the industry, I show using the correct product for the job or the okay. right tool for the job. So I'm not saying there's a problem with it, but you know, just like when I write a book, I don't, I show the correct product for the procedure. Okay. So yeah, go ahead and use it yourself. But for me, I'm not going to make a video showing other things when there's actually things on the market okay. with a name on it that says what it's for. And it was formulated by a chemist to do exactly this. So it's just a small little detail. Okay. Nope. Just quick. Okay. So a little rinse. And then here's something else I do over here. I got some soapy water mixed up. All right, and what type of soap do you use? I'm actually using, um, it's a coating wash. You know, So if you've got and a ceramic coating on your car, you want to use a car wash that doesn't have any carnauba or any glossing agents or shine. You just want pure clean. So that would basically act as the same thing. It'll remove any oils or anything like yeah. that that's from the cleaner. No, I just want to make, again, I'm, everything I'm doing is just to make sure this tire is clean. And as I'm as I'm scrubbing, when you're doing this, you always want to get to white foam, you know, black or brown coming off. Look how clean this is. So if you had brown right there, yeah, then you gotta, gotta go back to scrubbing. Yeah, and if you if the enemy was watching when I was machine scrubbing, I actually had white foam on the tire. So I, I'm confident this is clean. But this is an extra step, and I actually got one more extra step, but that's that's one of them. So this is the second one. Okay, now we're gonna rinse. Put the wheel a little bit. Okay, done with the water. Do, 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 do. Wow, hey look, you don't have to clean that part of the floor now. <laughs> okay. Well, us detailers, we are kind of neat, oh, we are kind of neat freaks. So, uh, you know, just by our nature. So I'm trying to be neat, neat with my floor. There we go. It's called OCD, Mike. We we all understand. In fact, my label's dirty. There we oh, go. now, uh, yay! Okay, so now I've I've got this thing clean. Um, this is just I call these scrap rags. It's just a terry cloth towel. It's stained, but it's clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. And actually what I want to see is I just, again, I want to see this towel coming off 
or showing up as clean, no black or no brown or no goo or nothing coming off of it. And I got a little bit of blackness off there, but that's kind of normal just because the tire's made of rubber and micro abrasion will take some tire off just by rubbing it. Okay, hit the rim here real quick. So it looks pretty. These are actually Halibrands, Auntie. Well, look at that. Okay, so then I got one more little thing I do to really make sure this is clean. Go, go, gadget arms. This is black fire paint prep. It's a panel wipe. So okay. if you ever put a ceramic coating so on it. So you're stripping it then? Yeah, I'm just going to chemically strip it. All right. Okay, and for that I have a... Do you need, like, you know, some I've got funky more music? <laughs> no. <laughs> and again, prep. It's, you know, the magic is in the prep work. Okay, so now we've got... I think the... that's everything to do with cars. Everything is all in the prep. <laughs> yeah. The only fun part is putting the key in it and, <laughs> and driving. driving it away. Everything else is work. Okay, and this is actually... Now that I'm done this, this is like whatever, the fifth or sixth time I've cleaned this tire. You oh, know? I think you did a little more than that. And now my cloth is coming out nice and clean. Okay. So it's, it's coming off nice and clean. I'm, well, it's kind of hard to tell since those were already kind of No, they're stained. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, now, got my tire where, I'm, where I think it's nice and clean. The next thing I want to do is I kind of want to make sure it's absolutely dry. I don't want to blow any water out around the lip here. So this is where this tool comes in handy. If you don't have one of these, especially if you do not have an air compressor, this is just so absolutely worth the money. They're great. I think they're right great at about motorcycles. 100 bucks. Yeah. And um, I, I use these for everything. They, they're, they're so powerful. They don't look like they would be because they're kind of small, but they're actually really powerful. And they got a little foam filter down here so the air that's being blown through is clean. And even though it's not designed to heat the air, by the time this thing runs for a few minutes and the motor heats up, it actually does blow out warm air. Yeah, I mean, it's not hot, but it is it warm. warm. Okay. Then you're just making sure you get all the nooks and cracks and crabbies right. One second, Nancy, I can't hear you. Man, that is a difference. Big difference. Okay. Now I was just saying that you're just making sure that you get all the little nooks and crannies and everything out of all the... Everything, yeah. Any water off of there is all... Um, okay. That is a big difference. I mean, if you were to see that from where I'm at right now, that is a big difference. Okay. Coffee cup. Is there scissors back there too? Uh, yeah, they're right behind your polisher. Gotcha. Okay. Now... What I'm going to show you next is kind of um, the, what do we call it? The MPM, the well, Mike you, Phillips you, method. You, you, yeah, you said MPT the first time, but that's not quite what you're going <laughs> that for. That's the Mike Phillips technique, but this is the, the MPM. And, uh, you know, the, I think, I'm not, I don't even remember what the directions are on the box of the label. I'm going to just show you how I do it. Well, uh, I think that's the reason why people are tuning in. They want to see how you do it. First, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a coffee cup. This is actually Dunkin' Donuts. Ooh, brand marketing. And, and this gonna, episode is brought to you by. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take and cut this down. Now, there's a reason for this. The, uh, the Tough Shine tire coating is a thin, viscous liquid. And it's real easy. As you're doing this, you're going to see that I'm going to apply some, and then I'm going to blow the tire dry. That's another time we're going to use this. It's so important to have one of these. If you want to use the Tough Shine tire system, it's just because you want to be able to speed dry it while you're sitting in front of this tire. You don't want to like do it to this tire and then move around the car so this can dry so you can put in a coat on when you could just sit down and do all five or six coats at one time. But you need something to speed dry it. And that's what I use that for. Now, back to the cup. If you, because it's a thin, viscous liquid, if you... If you don't have a pour off bottle like this, what Cup. most people do is, you know, you try to figure out how to put this on and set this to the side, then grab your blower and start blowing and you'll blow that thing over and all your liquid's going to be on the ground. Yeah, that would be bad. So what I do is brand new bottle here, shake it really well, open this up, 
pour some into my cup. The other thing is, is this stuff dries. It'll dry like glue. And um, so even if you have a nice cup to pour it off into, if you don't wipe it out or wash it, it's going to dry in there and be stuck in there. This here I can throw, throw it away. away. Yeah. So put this out of the way. And let's talk about brushes real quick. Woohoo, brushes. <sighs> My brush has got splatter on them. Way to go. That's because you're yeah. trying to make a pretty set. Okay, this is a cheapy brush. I think. Basically little what, painting brushes, right? I think they're like a dollar, dollar fifty. Or less. Uh, this is primarily used for wood stains though. A lot of people would stain wood with this when you're done, just yeah, pitch it. Close up. This here is, uh, I'm not exactly the, the what type this is, but this is uh, about a seven dollar brush. Okay. And it really works good to spread the coating out. This works too, but it's just, you know, you get what you pay for. It's a cheapy brush. Um, and then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, I'm going to spray this stuff on, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to blow it. I'm going to blow it into the little nooks and crannies. They call this siping, all the different lettering. And when you blow it, you want to blow from the lip of the rim out. Do not blow it in. You'll get it on the wheel. And like I said, when this dries, it's really hard to get off. A lot of times when I'm done with this, um, I will have this on my hands or my fingernails and it'll take three or four days to wear off, okay, with m multiple washings. Well, didn't you get rubber gloves? Well, I could, and I have some up there, but. Here, I'll get them, I'll no, be nice. No, it's okay. All right, fine. Uh, we sell gloves, but I'll just, but anyway, so this is how I would do this. Just take your brush, and of course, when you're done with this whole process, take this into the bathroom and the kitchen sink, you get some soapy water and wash the brush out and put it away and you can use it again. Okay, now, you can definitely tell where I've put this to where I haven't, but once I dry this, did I think knock most... your, Did you knock your mic down? You sound indifferent. Could have, I was it's flinging around inside my shirt there. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, might have, I, I can hear you, but you're just not as loud. Well, we'll have to have a sound engineer over here real quick. Yeah, I'm coming. Okay, so me... anyways, you just want to paint this on. And the first coat is the most important coat. You really want to get this worked in everywhere onto the tire. The cord was falling down my shoulder. There you go, sound engineer. Nothing like live TV. Okay, now I suggest whenever you're doing this to have a scrap rag around Yancey, can you zoom in and see where I got some of that on the rim? Where are you at, on the bottom or on the top? Right there. Okay, yep. Yeah, you don't want it to dry there. Oh, It'll well, be yeah, really hard to get, get off. across the entire bottom of the rim. Okay, so here's another one of the differences between this product and the PBL tire coating. This is, this is a slower, much slower drying product. Look, I'm going around this tire with the brush like the third time and it's still not drying up so on me. It's a little me. bit more forgiving in the application. Yeah, so you have more control over it. Okay, so I have a really good, well-worked-in coat. Now look how I put this away from where the air is going to blow. Away! Away, I say. And um, let me wipe that off the rim real quick. Smart idea. Yeah. Well, it's not my car, but... <laughs> it's not my car either. <laughs> but the customer would like it. Obviously. It is my friend's car. Okay, then you take this, and again, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to blow first out. All right, so you're going to start where? So I can I'm going to nice... start right here, but I want to okay. quickly just kind of quickly go around it and get all these large deposits of product flattened out. Then I'll kind of spend some time okay. blowing it out of all the crevices. So just real quickly. Okay, now I'll spend some time really working the product out of the lettering. Any of the siping out of the seam there. Okay. See, that's where I would stop. To me, that looks good. And you could. You could stop right there. Uh, that's not going to meet the Mike Phillips standard for shiny black tires, though. No, you like them where they're, they're liquid okay. gold. So that is gold. one coat. So now we'll go to the... I'm going to put six coats on here. 
And you know, it's too late now, but I should have put a tape line down and just did half Well, this. I can wheel out uh, Big Bubba after a while. Oh yeah, out. you could do that. Okay, so again, uh, and then look how I, I'm gonna bring my cup kind of over, you know, so. So that way you're not spilling it all over? Yeah, a little technique, you know, get the most bang for your buck. Another MPM. This episode is brought to you by the letters MPM. <laughs> MPM, yeah. <laughs> you had to think about that. <laughs> think about it. <laughs> He's concentrating, people. See, this is a Tom Sawyer moment. Hey, would you like to see how you can brush this on? Yeah, I wish I had some people that wanted to learn how right now. Let me show you how, Jim. So now, uh, all right, real quick. Now you're using a brush brush. Now, what about the people that are out there that are maybe like, oh, what about the foam brushes, you know, for stain application? Would that not work? It, they just tear up. Okay. The the handle rips through the foam, and then you throw it away. Yeah. Now, this is really the way to go. A nice quality brush. Okay, again. Putting it away. Putting that away so I don't blow it over and blow it all over the place. Yeah, I wonder how you know how to do that. Again, I'm going to blow away from the rim and then come back and kind of schmoo it over. Schmoo. There's that word again. Now, does it get like easier after you apply the coating to spread it all out? What's that? Does it get a little bit easier to spread it all out once you get an initial yeah, coating that, on there? The next coats all go better, smoother. Right. Okay, and the reason you want to get this dry before you put your next coat on is because you need to build this up to get that dark, shiny, plastic look um, if you're going for that. And um, if you just put wet coat on wet coat, the new coat just dissolves the original coat. So you need it to dry, then put the next coat on. So this would be coat number three. We'll stop at six. Now, I don't know if you're looking at that, but it still wasn't too much shinier than after the first coat, but it does look a heck of a lot better. Just, uh, it, it, it took it to like a little bit deeper, rich black, I guess. Uniform, a uniform look too. Yeah, yeah, no I, splotchiness, it's starting to really even out. Yeah, I, mean, I just asked him, it was like, how many people like matte and how many people like glossy? You'll see what the consensus says at the end of the video. You know, um, when I had my last monster truck, Yancey. Oh, I remember it. I had 40 inch tall Toyos on there. And um, that's back when I wrote my first article on how to machine scrub using the Porter cable. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. You got tired of doing it with my like, hand. Yeah, well, I could, those are big <laughs> a lot tires. Of real estate. I spent, four, I timed myself, I spent 45 minutes machine scrubbing each tire to get them clean. And then I put five or six coats of this Tough Shine on them. And then, you know, people always ask me, how long does that last? How long does this, how long does this last? Hey, somebody just asked that question. So Okay, well, if you do it right, and then here's the key, don't do stupid stuff, okay? Don't do stupid stuff to the tire, which means don't clean it with Simple Green or any of these other harsh, really effective cleaners because they'll start to degrade the coating. So just use car wash soap and it'll last. I got a year out of mine easily. And then I just came in and did a quick cleaning, uh, car wash cleaning, wiped it down with some pr um, paint prep and put two or three more coats on, boom, right back to how it looked a year right after I initially did it. So Then the coatings make it easier to clean. When oh after yeah, it was like working on plastic, yeah. basically. So you are making plastic. All right, I got a question for you, Mike. Now, say you actually 
overlooked uh, saw a glob or a little bit that's in the siping and stuff where it's thick, mm -hmm. would it show up when it dries or is Not it really. show clear? No, you know, one thing I always tell people is, you know, don't don't get so focused on these like they're your paint. You know, they're tires, you know. Get <laughs> they touch good, the road, people. Get them good and, you know, stick a fork in it and walk away. Call well, it, don't stick a fork in your tire. Call it done. It'll leak air. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. Well, we work with a, a demographic group of people that are very uh, OCD. <laughs> I don't get that. I don't get that OCD about the minutia. You know, if the big picture, if it looks good, good. Um, did you lose count? How many coats is this? Is no, I this, think this is your fifth. This is five. Okay. Tell me if I'm wrong, people, but I think this is fifth. Is this the fifth time or the fourth time? I know it's not six. No, I want to say it's your fifth. I think it is the fifth. I plead the fifth. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Just go with it. Anybody out there watching? Do you guys know who is counting? Is anybody? Can they please tell well, me? Well, this is another thing oh, where I, I got to count out loud. <laughs> well. <laughs> like when I buff out a car. Oh, no. I got somebody saying it's your fourth. <laughs> yeah. So we, we want to make sure. I want to put six on here because it really makes a difference. Thank you, you know? people. Thank you. Okay, so this is four. Again, I'm gonna set this to the side, grab this, blow it out. And if you guys can tell, see how easy that is actually spreading out now? Now that he already has the base coat basically down, just letting that stuff just spread right out. Definitely bringing in the gloss right now. <laughs> Michael on the I'm on the fourth figure once the coat. <laughs> and by the time you get done with all the tires, man, whew, you may not be able to stand. Look at that. I that, see. That look good. That it, looks, it looks like you did this once or twice. That looks good and it's dry to the touch. Okay, so here's coat five. We'll stop at six. What's up, Bernardo? Hope you are safe over there. Where are you at? Uh, South Carolina or wherever for that bike week? Oh, and by the way, Renardo, I like your new whip. That's a pretty nice little ride you got going on there. Ask him how that Alca Alcantara is doing. <laughs> Alcantara is nice. I like my Alcantara. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, look at that noise. All right, so this is five. A little bit on the rim. Way to be, man. Way to be. Move that out of the way. And this video is brought to you by Gloss. So deep stop gloss of your tire. Then it doesn't matter if you guys get it up on top like how you can see on the the top part of the tire he's got a little bit on the tread that's just going to wear off it's not going to do anything nope it'll just wear off and actually it'll make it even an even little thing all right sixth and final coat of mike's mpm method dun 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 wow that that looks good i know people are dying for me to zoom out so i can show them the before and after but you gotta wait but wait there's more
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> Your dip and flip method? <laughs> Yeah, you could actually clean these with a uh, spray detailer, you know, down the road instead of. True. Yeah, you know, anything that cleans, just like treated just like car paint, basically. Oh, good question, Paul. I, that is a very good question. Actually, I'm going to add this to the broadcast right now. Um, how would this work on off-road application, inflating and deflating of tires? Would it crack? I've never seen it crack. No, and I have one of my former students puts these on wrinkle walls like Big Bubba's. Oh, and Bruno. I think Bruno puts it on there, too. No, it, it's flexible. It's a flexible membrane. Okay. Very good question, Paul. But, you know, again, prep work's got to be perfect. <laughs> prep is king. Okay, last coat. Here we go. Now, basically, you got to think about this too, people. You're going to spend a little bit of time doing this, the initial time, but just think how fast these tires are going to be able to be cleaned afterwards and how much time you're going to save on the back end of not having to deep scrub your tires every time. So, like Mike says, prep is king a little bit right now. Boom, done. Okay. Oh, my, my good leg is about to fall asleep. Oh. All right, let me zoom in here. Oh, grab your, oh. grab your Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so then dry, absolutely dry and smooth to the touch. Yeah. No black coming off at all. All right, now go to the front tire and do that. Well, the front tire's clean. Oh, no, you know, oh, yeah, you did. Clean there's it. no Sorry. dressing on it. Um, it's I've already pre-cleaned this one, so it's ready to put the coating on. There's nothing on it. All right, but now I it. can go to the car I just bought that has a tire dressing on it and wipe it. You want to see that? Uh, it's probably wet from the oh, uh, yeah. Man, All right, but now here, look, people, there's, there's, oh, wait a minute, let me go. There's Whew. the before where it's just totally clean. All right. There's six coats of Tough Shine. So that is the gloss. If you're after a deep, deep gloss, six coats will get you to that. If you're like me, one or two coats to get you to a matte finish. All right, go ahead and step back up in the into the set there. Mike. Sure. <sighs> oh, are you tired now? Yeah, I'm tired. Well, you only got three more to go. Anyway, that that looks to me that looks good, and, and that'll stay like that. Again, is the the way I word this, as long as you don't do stupid stuff, you know, don't curb the tire, don't clean it with harsh cleaners. You can clean this with just whatever car wash you'd use on the body panels. Use on the tires. Yeah, and like I was saying too, I don't know, you might have been running a tool. Is you got to think you're going to spend a little bit more time doing this at the initial, but how much time are you going to save cleaning your tires after? Oh yeah, quick, fast, and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is that like the good, bad, and ugly? <laughs> quick, yeah. fast, and easy. Quick, fast, and easy. Okay. So now up here, I've already pre-cleaned these because you guys probably yeah, we don't need to clean. Yeah, them watching again. me scrub a tire is like watching paint dry. Uh, so these have been cleaned. I did the same process. I machine cleaned them four times, three, four times. I wiped them with the car wash soap, then I wiped them with the the panel wipe, and got them just down to pure clean rubber. Um, in the Pinnacle kit, it does come with its own gel tire cleaner, just like the uh, Tough Shine has its own cleaner. It does come with its own tire scrubbing brush. Again, low profile, stiff bristles. It comes with the tire clear coat. It comes with an applicator and it comes with a black microfiber towel. And a lot of times we use black color coated towels for the wheels and tires. So when they get stained, it doesn't psych psychologically bother you to see your Plus beautiful you know, black is this. Beautiful towels stain. I know me, all my towels are color coordinated. They all green are for waxes, grays for compounds. 
okay, now, the way this one works, shake this before you use it, is it's technically supposed to be one and done. Let me read the directions. It's been a while <laughs> since I read the directions. Uh, before application, tire must be extremely clean. Clean using the Check. pinnacle black tire gel tire cleaner. The gel tire cleaner will remove all previously applied dressings and will allow the tire clear coat to form a bond to the tire sidewall. Allow tires to fully dry. Dispense a nickel-sized dollop, dollop to a foam tire applicator and smooth evenly along the sidewall of the tire. Allow the tire clear coat to dry for 30 to 60 minutes between coats if desired. Important, always wear nitrile gloves. <laughs> I always blow that one out the window. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so it does say you can do more than one coat, but it's supposed to be like one and done. What I usually do is I do two good coats. Okay. Another thing the towel would be good for again is if you get it on the rim, because just like the tough shine, if you get this on the rim and let it dry, it's going to be there until it wears off. Okay, so now here's a technique for um, using a tire swipe on tires. In order to get down here close to the lip, you need to put some on the edge, not just in the middle. And usually what I like to do is go ahead and apply some. And, and work it in a little bit? Because, yeah, you work it in, because otherwise it's trying to just run off. And once you got it worked in, then it'll start to go into the foam a little bit. So see how it just kind of sits on there? Mm -hmm. Work it in. Okay. Let's see if I can make this look easy. It's on you now. I'll go over here. Where he's going. One continuous loop for mankind. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? Are you space, space shuttle launching my head? SpaceX. So you're basically working from the outside. I mean, from the inside out. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I just try to be theatrical. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's the only reason why. <laughs> I'm up in my game, people. I wanted to see if I could just do it in one fell swoop. Now. If you ask me, that looks pretty good. One application versus if you watch the tire shine, how many did I do? Six. Six. And then let it dry. Now, and, and again, you guys can see how we put the made those little blocks to get that tire up, so that way we don't have a little piece of the tire that you're not able to get with the applicator. So just a little food for thought. Because if not, you'd have to roll the tire forward to get that little piece. And I do like to go back to the sidekick and use this to just spread to it? make sure I blow it in through all the lettering so there's okay. no little piles there. I don't know, that, look, that looks good. One coat. One coat, one and done. One and done. All right. If you want a little shinier, you can just put a second it. coat on. Makes sense to me. Which you're you, you're not happy. You're going to. Uh, are you? No, nope, maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, me. you're fighting it. You're fighting it. You're uh, fighting it. Well, I, I always like to give due credit where credit is due, and I I, I remember when Andre was working on this uh, form, formula with the chemist, you know, and uh, he showed me this a couple times, and I was like, wow, because usually I'm stuck over here doing all these coats, you know, and uh -huh. I thought that was pretty impressive. I actually have that on two of my personal cars, and I think it's probably been a year since I put it on. So again, after you get the coating on, as long as you don't do stupid stuff, don't wash it with harsh cleaners. All right, that especially, I just have a Hector Zapata. He <laughs> asks, what about wheel decon sprays? Can you use those? Well, you know, that would go back to doing stupid stuff. Why would you <laughs> want to put something strong on a, on a this is a sensitive plastic, oh, rubber. It's a sensitive acrylic finish. Oh, you're talking about the coating. Okay. Yeah, the right. coating. So I wouldn't spray a wheel cleaner on here. I would wash it with, I said this before, so I'll say it again. Just wash it with a normal car wash soap. It's, 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 it's just as smooth and hard as car paint at this point. Look at it. Look how nice that is. There's no reason to spray a heavy cleaner on here. If you do, it's going to probably dull it down and wear it off faster than if you just didn't do stupid stuff. Ah, don't do stupid stuff, people. Mike says, 
Okay, let me go to, um, will this, I'm going to ask, start asking some questions here. Uh, will this work on white walls? Yes, it will. In fact, it's a great way to keep the white wall walls from, from uh, turning into like a gray brown. Well, well, what happens with white walls or white letters is actually because of the browning effect. And let me talk about the browning effect. The browning that comes out of tires, it penetrates and migrates into the white letters of the white wall and turns it brown. So if you seal that black rubber surface with a coating, the browning doesn't come out, A, and two, it can't migrate into it. So it, it preserves them. And the browning, let me talk about the browning. You know, back in uh, 2002, um, I wrote the frequently asked questions for the Meguiar's website. They had a page and I turned it into 20 pages. I, was, I just expanded everything. And one of the things I did way back then was I went to the chemist and asked him about this brown appearance and he explained to me what it is. And nowadays when you go up on the internet and you see people talking about it, I'm pretty sure it all came from that one fact I wrote, which would be uh, 18 years ago. <laughs> Um, but um, here's what it is. It's called blooming. And when, a ru when rubber is manufactured, they put an ingredient into the rubber called anti -ozonant. And as the tire spins at speed, so high speed, 65 miles an hour down the freeway, when it's spinning at speed, the anti ozonant migrates out of the tire and it refreshes the rubber to keep it flexible, to keep it from dry rotting, to keep it from cracking. When that anti ozonant that migrated out of the tire meets ozone in the air, it turns brown. Right, okay. So that's where the browning comes and it's called blooming, but it's a natural, it's a natural reaction of how the tire, the rubber is supposed to actually work. When we put the coatings on, it's still migrating out, but it can't get anywhere because you just sealed the tire. Okay, all right, cool. Um, ba, 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 ba. Here's Nathan Langley. Any period of time we should wait our, our new tires to apply a coating? You know, um, uh, I actually have a background in tire manufacturing, and uh, there is a, uh, a mold release uh, type of material on the mold to make the tire pop out easier. So um, in a perfect world, if you bought a brand new set of tires, if it was me and my car, I'd drive that car for maybe a month. Just drive it and let anything that's on there kind of migrate out from the original mold and wash them, but just avoid using a dressing on. Just try to get them as clean as you can. And then at one point you're gonna go and do the, the prep work clean and then put the coating on. But take your time, don't be in a rush. Put it okay. that way. All right, um, let's go right. Actually, that's a pretty good question right here. Can uh, Gordian, Gordian, I think I said your name right. Uh, what can you use to clean rims without damaging the tire coating? Say you have like a really baked iron, well, baked iron rim. Yeah, that, that is a problem. Well, first of all, always use a high quality wheel cleaner, okay? And there's a lot of good brands out there. Um, if, you, if you're gonna, here's, here's another way to look at that, and here's what I do with my own cars. If you're gonna go this nutso, okay? Nutso. Uh, then the clean, your, clean your rims and put a coating on them. And then for the most part, you can clean your rims with a car wash soap too. See, the thing about a coating on rims, people get the wrong idea. They put it, they go to all the work or they pay a, a detailer to go to all the work to prep the rim and put a ceramic coating or a quartz coating or a polymer coating on the rim. And then they think now the rim won't get dirty. That's wrong. Rim's still gonna get dirty. The difference is, is because the coating's there, it's gonna wash off easy. So now you don't need to use the harsh wheel cleaners. You could just go back to a good brush and a quality car wash. And so now you can use the car wash on the rims and the tires. But yeah, if you've got to get in there and use a, uh, you know, a Sonax or a Meguiar's wheel brightener, you know, some of the more popular wheel cleaners on the market, uh, just avoid getting on the tire, get the tires wet first. So there's already a layer of water on there. So the chemical that hits is diluted okay, and, and work sense. fast and work easy. But to tell you the truth, you're, people, you're making more into this than it has to be. Um, I, I, again, um, does this cover the keep it simple? Yeah. Keep it simple. You know, um, most of the, the wheels I've owned, I did, have not had coatings on them, but my tires have been coated and I still use wheel cleaners on them, but it didn't destroy it. You just don't want to do stupid stuff to the tire overall. I'm feeling a theme. Don't be stupid. <laughs> don't still do uh, dumb things. Okay. Da, 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 da. Well, I get that question a lot, you know, no, I understand. Tires. I totally, how yeah. long does it last? Well, it lasts a long time if you don't do stupid stuff. So. So okay. kind of uh, how it is. All right, moving along. Pat Leone, I think I said your name right. Will putting a coating on cause tires to dry rot? No. No? Okay. Never seen it in my life. Never seen it in your life. Okay. And, and really, dry rot happens when a tire sits. So like if you got a motorhome or a boat trailer or a utility trailer where 
Most of the time it's not being used, it's just sitting there exposed to the elements and aging, then it dry rots. As long as the tire's being used, I, you just don't see tires dry rot. A modern tire used on a car does not dry, you'll wear the tread out before it'll dry sure. rot. Yeah, that's kind of just technology advanced and it's just the way yeah. you can make the tires yeah. out. Yeah. All right, so, um, not an issue. Not I'm, going, question, I'm going back to some of the earlier questions. Um, Hector Zapata, uh, let's get to yours. Is that dedicated tire cleaner safe for all wheels or should it be tested anyway? The, well, that's when you're doing the tires. You know, I, I, um, I, I believe it's safe on anything. Um, for, first of all, both these companies, you know, when they put together a, pro, a formula like that, they understand it's gonna hit the rim. Uh, the only time, I, you know, and I, I got to kind of cater to the most OCD people in the world, so I'm really good at couching my words. But, you know, if you had a, a painted rim, um, you'd, again, get the rim wet with water first, so if any of the tire cleaner hits it, it's diluted by the water that's on the rim first. You know, so, but in my, in my life, I've never seen it be an issue. Both these are good brands. They make great products. Okay, all right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and most finishes are impervious. I mean, I mean, uh, if you got chrome, days, yeah. you got polished aluminum. The clear coat used on rims is tougher than the clear coat used on paint. Yeah, so why. everything's pretty tough down there, unless you got something that maybe you did yourself with a rattle can. Okay, let's go. Moving on. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Why are you not giving me my thing? Well, I was trying to add you on here, Chris D. D. Giovanni. Can you use the blower to blow out microfiber pads? Just curious since you said it was powerful. Uh, yeah, no, it worked great for that. In fact, yeah, you bet. Uh, I thought I'd bring this over here and then I'd have something to stand behind. <laughs> or you could just, all right. Now you're making me move, man. The things uh, that we talked about today. Oh yeah, here, you be set designer now. You set that all up while I go through the questions. Um, and don't forget, we're gonna talk about solvent base and uh, I know. water base I got, I got that coming up. Let me get some of their questions out first. Uh, should we worry about that product? Should we worry about product blowing up on the vehicle? Do what? Should we worry about product like when you're when you're cleaning the tires or when we're putting the coating on? Should you worry about it getting up on the vehicle? No, no. Oh no, I just wash off. See, again, and what I already kind of covered this in case they came in late. Um, normally, when I detail a car, what I teach in my classes is you start with the wheels and tire first, then you go to the top and work your way down. So if it gets on the vehicle, you're going to wash it off anyway. And if you weren't going to wash the car and you're just the wheels and tires, then just, you know, wipe it down with spray detail or hit it with the car wash. It's, it's not that big a deal. Okay. Nope. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Just for a second, let's put you up on the table polish. Uh, we're, well, we're kind of not talking about the hybrid wax thing. Uh, <laughs> kind of on tires today, Dave. What do you call it? We will, I'll answer you in the comments here in a little bit. Um, how long does it last? The tough shine, I do believe that was when that question came through. Well, actually, just both both of them. How long do you, both of these products? You know, I, I think six months is a good average, but I get it a year. It depends on what you get, what I you're get doing with your tires. I get a year out of if I don't do stupid stuff. <laughs> and again, better than stupid And then, stuff. if you want to refresh it, just clean it lightly and put another coat on. You know? Correct. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, most common question I get is how long does that last? But it always comes down to how long anything lasts comes down to how we touch it. And I always use this ridiculous analogy, like if you have a nice finish on your car like this, this, by the way, I did all the paint correction work and put a ceramic coating on, and it will last two, three years if you wash it carefully with a clean, uncontaminated wash mitt. If you take and wash it with a cinder block, it probably won't last very long because of the way you're touching it. So, you know, when it comes to your tires, don't do stupid stuff. Use the car wash soap and a wash mitt, you know, because it's, it's basically like a plastic surface at this point. It's no longer rubber. So it's going to clean easy. Whatever's on there's going to peel off with a little bit of normal soap. Heck, you could use hand soap in a car wash mitt and it would clean off. All right, that makes sense with me. Um, we'll just work on white walls, very time. I think I've gotten to the rest of the questions. Um, use wheel cleaner to clean the solder with our soaps. All right, no, yeah, I think we went through all that. Um, let's bring into your stuff, solvent versus water base. Okay, so let's talk about dressing. So. These were coatings, you know, the prep work's important, they're gonna drive the touch, last a long time. Dressings, there are a boatload of tire dressings on the market. One or two. Yeah, and the difference is, is, you know, you put them on, they come in a spray, they come in a gel, they come in an aerosol, so however you wanna get them on there, you get them on there, and then uh, one of the most common complaints is that they sling off, okay? So they sling off after you take off and they're on the lower body panel. Especially so, when you get a car from the dealer. Yeah, and usually what I tell people to do is instead of, uh, is when you're done putting it on, take one of your scrap rags and wipe the tire down to wipe the excess off, then there's nothing to sling off. 
And uh, I know that some guys want that real gooey, wet look. Well, if you want the real gooey, wet look, then you're going to have tire dressing sling because the excess is, through centrifugal force, going to sling off. So it's kind of a give and take. Um, Do you remember, the, I think it was Meguiar's, or I can't remember who it was, that actually had like the little metal flake in, in the... It was the Meguiar's. I, I do remember. Tire shot, yeah. what, what the hell There was, was a brand of dressing that was out there that had metallic in it, and you yeah. get it in different colors. colors. Oh, man, that it was It was so out nasty. in California big time when I was out there. Yeah. Uh, but water-based and in, in, um, in what they just generically call solvent-based. Let me just tell you the difference. So most of the people, let's just say the masses, the masses want a tire dressing that lasts a long time. So you want something that does not break down in water. So when we think of water, that could be rainwater, mud puddles on the road, washing it, True. you know, running it through a car wash, anything that gets it wet. So if you make it solvent or, the, you know, when we say solvent, I don't like to use the word solvent, that's what it is, but it's, it's more of Chemical an oil. Based. It's like a silicone oil, different types of Instead oils. of water, chemical. Okay, and it does not break down in water. Okay, so you put that on your tire, and it lasts a long time. It doesn't wash off in the rain. But the problem is, is your tire is still going to get dirty with road grime. Okay, so now you've got a dressing on there that's dirty. Now, how are you going to get that off? It was made not to come off. That's why it's <laughs> solvent dressing. So when you do wash it, you take your wash mitt, some soap, and get it on there, a brush, and then that turns all black and gooey. So again, if you like those type, deal with, you know, get them and deal with all the troubles that they're caused because their tire's going to get dirty and it's just you need to get the old stuff off to get new stuff on to make them look good. So how about thinking like this? Use a water-based vinyl rubber treatment. Now, it will wash off easily with soap and water and now you can replace it easy. Ah, uh, you know, so it smarter, not harder. You know, actually, as Mike Pennington and McGuire's taught me this, he used the McGuire's M40 in all the company cars and I says, why do you use that? He goes, because it doesn't last. I go, well, that's backwards. Everybody wants something last because not me. I want to be able to get it off so I can then replace it. Because, see, then when you replace it, it has that fresh dressed look. look. Yeah. Okay. And Makes it was sense. quick and easy because it was water based. You can get it off. If you use something that's solvent based, it's hard to get off. It's going to look, look ugly. Getting it off is going to be a lot of work. And then what are you going to do? Put it back on again. Well, now you're back on this cycle. It's going to get dirty. It's going to be hard to get off. So find a great water based vinyl rubber dressing and the ones i like to use are actually the ones that are cleaner conditioners okay so they okay. clean and condition just like if you had a vinyl interior and say you put your arm, arm on there you don't on want it all rest. over on you yeah well you know you sweat and stuff like that so you, you instead of doing a dedicated cleaner and a dedicated protectant use an all-in-one cleans it conditions protects it in one step use that product on your tires and you and you basically can take and use the machine like i had down here mm -hmm. Spray it on the tires, buzz around the tire. It'll clean it, condition yeah. and protect it. Leaves you the leaves a nice matte finish, and you're done. I it's, like the way you think, Mike. Uh, you know, everything I come up with is based upon the premise that I'm actually lazy. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not OCD. I, I, I don't like really working people. <laughs> people just like people to... think I'm OCD, but I'm actually lazy. So you find ways that just you know work smarter, not, not harder. harder. I think that's what it all comes to. Yeah. It's not that you're lazy. I, mean, so, I see yeah, you work. But it's just you, you work, your time is money, and you want to work smarter. You don't. Well, want to work you know, but I like to think things through. And uh, once. Oh Mike, yeah, he thinks things through. Uh, I can go deep. Once I Mike shared see, that, there it goes. I can, we can go yeah. Deep. Once Mike shared that with me back in McGuire's, I just kind of makes sense. And so I was a big number four. But there's a lot of products like M40 out there. They'll do the same thing. They'll clean, condition, protect, water based. Okay. Um, what else do you want to cover here? That's really about it. You know, all this stuff is uh, good stuff. You know, the, the, the one thing I was showing, you know, every time I, I show this up on my Facebook here. page, uh, you know, people always ask me where to get the brush. Well, Auto Geek's where you get it. Well, yeah, I mean, this is where you're at tool, right now. The tool is just freaking amazing, too. And you can't get shocked. I, I will tell you one time before the cordless tools were introduced, this would be about five oh, or I remember six, you telling me about this. I got shocked. Yeah. So... Here's a little lesson, you know, first of all, I'm not going to recommend fun. using a tool that you plug into the wall around water. I did it and I learned the hard way what happens, but most of your driveways are, are slanted at an angle. Most of them, not all, here, but I'm most. Gonna come on out here. When, when that is the case, always start on the downhill side, not the uphill side. If you start at the uphill side, so, you'll have water that runs down to the downhill side. Then you'll be down there by that tire in water. And that's what I did. So I made the mistake of working on the uphill side with the tool that I plugged into the wall. And I got a little shock and I, I immediately got up. I came in here and I unplugged it in here, <laughs> then coiled up was the that cord. before we had the GFI circuits <laughs> or after? Well, I still got shot. That was before the GFI circuits, yeah. We have GFI here now. And you can buy a portable G GFI yeah. at any hardware store. And if you are doing it with a with a, a regular corded, I would highly recommend, if you don't have GFI, to get you one of those just to save you. I mean. Yep. It's not fun getting shocked by electricity. Clean your brushes Clean. when you're done. 
and that way they'll be ready to go. Yes. Hey, take care of your tools. They'll take care of you. Um, do we know what we're doing next week? No, we have no clue. Ha, surprise! Oh, uh, convertible top. Oh, sorry. Convertible top. Hey, uh, I show a lot of tips and techniques for cleaning cloth tops. And we have a very yeah, special cool. We have a very special cool car coming down for this, and it needs to be cleaned and protected. protected. Yep. So we'll do both of that. Yeah, and I'll tell you uh, just real quickly. Um, you know, I've been in the detailing business for a long time. I meet a lot of people that buy a, a convertible, convertible Corvette, mm -hmm. convertible Miata, whatever it might be. And rarely do I meet a person that proactively cleaned and reapplied a waterproofing protection to that canvas top. They just let it go for years. And then they wonder why that their top is falling <laughs> yeah. apart and they have to replace it. And, and it's not that hard to do, but I tell you, sometimes a little technique goes a long way. Well, so I'm going to share a lot of technique. Or whatever it is. What is that saying? Ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care. There you go. See, that's the reason why I keep him around. So next week, we will be doing convertible top care and protecting. We are done for the day. Like you can see back there, you like, actually, I forgot to look. I think I think it was pretty much a 50-50 on the gloss and the matte. Yeah. When I did the little thing. Well, if you guys like gloss, put gloss. If you like matte, put matte. <laughs> um, kind of curious about that one. Uh, me, I'm a matte guy. He's a gloss guy. See, I'm standing by my tire. He's by his tire. So we will see you next week. And anything else? Same time, same bat channel? Nope, but I would just say that um, when I teach my roadshow classes and my big three-day classes here, this is just one of the topics I show, and you get to do the work. I bring in enough tires and cars that you get to <laughs> do Tom all the stuff. This Tom Sawyer method of his. One, just one topic I show you how to do, and oh. uh, it's, just, it's just a tool in your tool belt. Well, I, I think after a lot of these people out there, after they get in watching it, I think if they've never did this this way, I think they are going to switch over and do it. And also, what do you call, we didn't mention it, that... Um, if you don't have this setup, mm -hmm. you can actually, we have the cyclo brushes there. Mm -hmm. You could actually screw into a uh, porter cable or something like that. Yep. Cycle you, brushes. Yeah, cyclo brushes. We got the Mighty that. Mini, the cordless Mighty, Mighty Mini. Mini. And also have the it's a hundred bucks. Right. But just to say somebody, they just want this. Yep. You, you can attach that to it, but it just won't do as good of a job yeah, as a rotary. No, no, this is it doesn't killer. Have the power. This is killer. It yeah. is killer. If budget's not a factor, get the PE-14. <laughs> Go to town. Go couple tennis. batteries, get to get this, get that. It's so nice. All right, yeah. so next week, convertible top. And with that, I do believe, stay by, Mike. See you later.